taking you inside the Wolf's Den. Brought to you by Little General Stores. Welcome back to Dana Holgerson Show and Inside the Wolf's Den. I'm Wolf Dad, and this, of course, is offensive coordinator Jake Spadavell. Spad, thanks for coming in the den. Means uh, you had a really good game this Saturday <laughs> against Texas. And, you know, we've talked about the four layers of defense. You have the defense right. line, the backers, the safety, and then the other safeties right here. Correct. Four layers. And the, it's really trending in the Big 12 right now. But again, I thought you guys came out and did an incredible job of game planning, and the players went out and did an incredible job of executing it. Right. And, you know, this was the first play of the game right here. And, and like what you're talking about with the four layers of defense, um, we didn't know how they were going to come out and play us. So this was a safe first play. It was a motion to empty that we had not shown yet. But you got what was interesting is we're in a stack formation out here with Wesco at the head of the stack where he's going to set the tone with his block. All right, and then we're going to play off the running back with that, trying to get something out in space. All right, Will has a few other options on here. He has the option to throw it up here into, into the boundary on a, on a hitch or even the inside fade to David Sills. But we talked about this all week. When you get into these diamond sets, somebody has to adjust and run out here. So if you look at all the space that is out here on the perimeter, it was a no-brainer for Will to get that out there. It was part of the plan, too, to get these guys moving sideline to sideline, try to get them worn down pretty easily throughout the course of the game. Right, right there, you can see it just took them too much time. Six yards, that's a good game. Yeah, it's a great game. you got to take those in chunks. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the next play right here. Again, you're going to see now you're going to have the 11 personnel set up here with Trayvon Lesko, where you're going to use him as a blocker. Exactly, and, and they are in their diamond set right here, but it was a little bit different. They shaded this backer a little bit outside of the tackle, which is a little bit different than how teams have played us, but we're going lead outside zone into the boundary where we're going to have those guys account for these. The offensive line is going to account for these, and Wesco is going to chip his way through this, work into this stack backer over the top that's sitting there on the 50-yard line, which uh, it, it ended up being good. Yadney ends up getting it reached out. Great job by by Kennedy on getting to the edge, getting to the perimeter. If you look how Wesco ends up hitting him late all right, and freezing this backer, all right, that's what we're trying to look for. I thought these guys played with an aggressive nature, which was part of the success that we had running the ball. And again, another five yards, next play, let's check it out. Yeah, I just wanted to change it up, so you bring in Tevin Bush, who brings a whole other element to the game. Uh, he's a very space-oriented player. And this is a motion from the boundary, trying to attack this space right here, okay? What happens is, is on the motion, number 11 ends up coming down, rolling down to take it away, which we have. If they are doing that and they're playing for Tevin, you see all these bodies are playing out here for the motion, which means we're going to be outnumbered in the run game. And that's why the run game ends up hitting right here. Again, they're playing with an aggression, but you're also outnumbered into the boundary with this run. So you motion right, draw the defense that way, and then you go back the other way. Pretty good. Last play here. All right, and this one right here. I keep playing this one. This one right here is our mesh play, okay? This was a third down. All right, so one of the things that they were very multiple on defense, and one of the things we wanted to do on third down was to keep them on their toes. And we wanted to tempo as fast as we could and go into this. So we had 11, like, Tevin Bush is in the game, so he automatically lined up in this set right after this on a third down where we're going to put a five-man pro and we're going to swing the back on a wheel route into the boundary. And we're doing a mesh concept where we're trying to get a pick for Tevin with Wesco trying to pick for somebody, which ends up opening him up where this backer ends up actually going for Wesco, all right? If he's not open, then David Sills is sitting right there on the hash, which really Will had his choice of, at throwing to both of them, but you know, never get greedy with it. Take the first guy and move on. Absolutely, hey, you can only cover one guy, you can't cover two. <laughs> exactly. All right, so now we have the sequence. I'm just gonna call it the sequence, because I think everybody <laughs> knows what that means here. Right. Uh, with the, the touchdown here to Gary, and then of course with the two-point conversion. So go ahead, roll it. Right, so we, uh, the previous play, we ended up running the inside zone to get the first down to stop the clock. Uh, they're setting the chains. The referee was actually holding the ball a little bit longer than I wanted him to, but uh, uh, it was a, a good time to get the, the play called in, which we were gonna have a max pro, which was gonna be a, a, a slide with a chip protection with Wesco leaking out in the flats, which is gonna allow Gary to try to attack this field as fast as he can vertically. And then you gotta come back as an option check down right here on the perimeter. Now you look at what's, in, what's really sparks the whole play to me is Kelby Wickline right here. They bring a corner blitz, all right? And that's great recognition of him seeing that late and kicking out to it, all right? Uh, if you probably take this back and you pause it when he's about to throw the ball, all right? He throws it about right here, all right? You know, Gary is about the 20-yard line, you know, a little past that. That's unbelievable timing all right, and execution where that's probably one of the hardest throws you're ever going to see in this game of, 
understanding that the you got the layers of the defense, but that they're running out of space. And he knows that to throw this ball with the trajectory that he needs, there's only this is the amount of time that I need to get the ball out. And what, what I've seen in practice is these kids do this all the time. It was just fun to see them actually execute this in a live situation because I don't think there's a tighter window. I don't think there's any room for error that you can get through right here. What do you tell the quarterback when he's not he's throwing off his back foot? When he makes that play. <laughs> well, I, 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 I told him, I was like, that's one of the best throws I've ever seen because he understood, if you took it all the way back to the start of it, he understood that he, ha he can't set his feet. If not, that ball, if he... If he waits a fraction of a second longer, that ball goes out of the back of the end zone. And he knows mentally in his internal clock that he's got to get that ball out and it's got to come out now because if not, Gary's going to run out of the back of the end zone. So, of course, this is the play that actually won the game right here. Uh, go ahead and take it. Yeah, so we came back out into the exact same look. And we called the same play, actually, just because there's so many options with this. Um, we were going for the fade concept, but we knew that they were going to change their look up because – we were working that slant combo, which was pretty interesting for them is, is that they came to a 3-1 box. They took their buck player to play him out to take away the slant, and they're taking number two, which was number four on the previous snap. They moved him in an outside leverage technique, All right, and that was just going to bracket David Sills, which we, we had a timeout available for this, All right, and we were sitting on the sidelines. We knew that they were taking away David Sills. And we were seeing if we wanted to run that QB draw. And we completely agreed with it. We knew that there was going to be a great opportunity for Will. They would not be expecting that because we haven't ran Will at all really much in these situations. Game on the line. You want to utilize this kid's athletic ability. Great job by Kelby Wickline washing down the four eye. Will, what really was impressive with Will is he sets it up with these running interior, like running inside first to get everybody to bite. And then he bounces out and because they lose containment. So that was end. intentional. It was intentional. That's a lot of moxie. It is. That's a lot of moxie. That's a great <laughs> job. Well, hey, you know what, Coach? Thanks for coming in. Great job against Texas. Now, let's go get TCU. No problem. All right. Hey, stay tuned for a lot more to come to the Dana Hogerson Show. Wolf's Den is sponsored by the all-wheel drive RAV4, the official SUV of the Mountaineers, with all these advanced safety features standard. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. <laughs> Toyota, let's go places. The Dana Holgerson Show will return after these messages.